Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. And the Retouch 4.0 action is finally ready to be out there and it's free and I've made it available for all of you. Just look at the description below and it'll take you to the Google Drive to download it. There was a previous video on the channel where I gave away the Retouch 3.0 action, but now 4 is ready to be out there and to be launched. So this action populates three different folders groups. The first folder group will populate all the layers that you need for frequency separation for a 16-bit image. The second folder group will populate all the layers you need to dodge and burn. I currently use the curves adjustment method for dodging and burning. And the final folder group will populate a whole bunch of different layers to be able to retouch human eyes and gives you a lot of options within it. So this action is very similar to the Retouch 3.0, but there's been some subtle little changes to it, and I do think these changes are worth exploring. So let's dive into the Photoshop, take a look at the Retouch 4.0 action. I'll explain a few new bits and pieces to you, and then we'll be done for this journey today, and you can download that action, hit the Photoshop, and make you some artwork. Introductions as always to get us started. This is my wonderful friend Kiara. You've seen her in several previous videos on the channel If you'd like to see more of her amazing artwork visit the Instagram account at the link below Now this image has already been retouched and finalized But we just need an image to demonstrate the retouch 4.0 action onto it and let's run the action now So when you click the action for the first time It's going to populate the first two layers that you need for frequency separation Then you'll have a little menu that pops up and this message tells you precisely where to go and what to do next to continue the action going forward. So it says go to filter, noise, and median and reduce the detail. A selection between two and six pixels usually will suffice. The goal is to have an out of focus image, but the shape is still defined. The details are just lost. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop, then do what it told me to do, which is to come up to filter, down to noise, and then to median noise. That brings up the median noise dialog, Right now it's set to a radius of seven in the dialogue. It's set a radius between two and six, usually will suffice. But let me demonstrate to you what we're looking for. So I'm gonna travel up until I get to, T to Kiara's eye. I'm gonna back out just a little bit. The goal here when we reduce the detail at this step to again prepare all the layers for frequency separation is you want to be able to recognize the shape itself. You can tell this is an eye, you can see it's an eyebrow, eyelashes, the pupil of the eye, the catch light, and so forth. If I were to increase this radius to, let's say, 20, we can kind of tell that's an eye, but still, if you didn't know what you were looking at, it would take you a moment or two. This is how you know you've went too far and blurring the detail for this specific step in frequency separation. So if I go from 20 to two, we can definitely tell it's an eye, but we can still make out a lot of fine detail into this. Looks a little fuzzy, but there's just too much detail there. Remember, we need to obliterate the detail as much as possible, but still be able to make out the shapes. So let's go to not 26, let's go to six. Detail, it's kind of blurred out, it's fuzzy, it's good. And remember two to six is usually suffice. Let's go to like eight. I like eight, eight looks good because we still have the shape, but everything in all the lines, like right underneath the eye, the top of the eye and so forth, they're all pretty much blended and blurred together. So that looks good. Again, a range somewhere between that two to six, if you go to seven, eight, that's fine. It's up to you. If you go too far into the twenties and thirties, yeah, you're not gonna get the results that you need. So once you've done that, go ahead and hit okay. And then you would just continue the action itself. Now, if you're using the button mode for actions, you would just click the button. If you're just using the play button itself, just hit play and it will continue forward. Now, Photoshop is going to run through over here and do a bunch of different stuff populate all the layers that it needs, it labels them and so forth, puts them into their groups, and then it stops you in the frequency separation folder group, which is the first one that it made. It stops you on the main detail layer and selects your clone stamp brush. That's what you need to use to start working in the image when you do frequency separation. Now, I'm not going to go through a full demo here. I did that in the previous video. And if you're new to this channel, Welcome, take a look at the card above. It will take you to the retouching series. And in that series are full in-depth guides on popular retouching methods and techniques like frequency separation, dodging and burning and all of that. So if you're new to digital photo editing, please, please visit that retouching series because again, there's very in-depth guides there. All I want to do here is just to explain some of the changes that has happened between retouch 3.0 and 4.0. So in 4.0, we pretty much have the same folder here for frequency separation 
function, I did eliminate a curves adjustment layer that was connected to the detail layer because ultimately it was too circumstantial to work with and just didn't make sense. And I got a lot of messages from people saying, hey, what's this curves adjustment layer for? And I'm like, don't worry about it. Just, just move on. Gina, it's fine. Anyway, so up here you have a black and white adjustment layer that lets you see everything in black and white. This is the first stage that makes it easier to see any detail that needs to be removed from the scene. And then I do highly recommend that you turn that off when you start working on the main color layer here using the mixer brush and so forth. These two layers are the same. These are the blank layers that you would use the basic brush on to start painting a new color if the scene required it or if the image needed it. Now scrolling up to the next folder group, which is turned off by design with the action. So you have to click the eye icon for the folder group. When you do, everything goes to black and white again because at the top of this group is another black and white adjustment layer. When we work with dodging and burning, we're adding, adding artificial highlight and shadow into the scene. It is helpful for your eyes to see white, black, and gray because then you can start to see the actual luminosity values that are in this image. You can start to be, be able to adjust them and create that false sense of three dimensionality to the image by using the burn or the dodge curves adjustment layer. The other two color burn and color highlights, these two are very stylized and specific that you can work on in certain key areas within the image itself. So for instance, to give you just a brief demonstration, I'm gonna hit B for brush. I'm gonna increase the size of my brush just a little bit, make sure that I'm on a soft round brush. And right now my opacity and flow are both at 100%. I'm gonna change my flow to 10% by hitting shift and the number one on the keyboard. So let's just do this for giggles. If I start painting, right now my foreground color is black, so I'm painting black onto a black mask, nothing is going to happen. I need to switch my foreground color to white by hitting the letter X. Now when I paint white onto the black mask, it will start to reveal the effect. So so if I start painting, see how the color highlights is really making the color highlighted and stand out. And again, it's a very stylized thing. So this is obviously a little too far, but it is also a good use for things like special effects and so forth. Now in artistic work like this for a beauty portrait of Kiara, I would use the color highlights curves adjustment layer here on small little areas like right through here at the top of her lip, maybe at the tip of her nose and so forth, just to let some of these little fine details of the makeup and so forth stand out just a touch but I don't wanna to go too far with this. Now, same thing for color burn. Color burn is simply just going to take the color and make everything darker. So I'm going to look at the darker regions of color that are in the scene and potentially augment those by making them just a touch darker. And that's a different function and method than just using the burn adjustment layer here. So experiment with all of those color burn, color highlights. They have a lot of artistic use within the overall dodge and burn effect. And then the final folder group, again, turned off by design with the action is the group for eyes. So I'm gonna click this one and turn it on. There's no black and white adjustment layer in this folder group. It's just all the different layers. This is pretty similar to Retouch 3.0, but a couple of methods of adding light to the eyes have changed. So they are in numerical order. So you would start with number one here, which is to whiten the eyes. You're going to be painting on that black mask again, painting white purely into the eyes. The next one, number two, is the iris light boost. This is using a solid color adjustment layer that is set to white to do this instead of older methods and ways that I had done it in the past. There's an optional extra light boost here using a curves adjustment method. This one is one that once you paint it in, you simply just need to increase the curve and start moving this around to be able to see that boost in light if it is needed. Then the third layer here, number three in that sequential numerical order is color boost. This is just a hue and saturation adjustment layer. You would paint on the mask through the iris to reveal all the color. When you do this step, it's going to make the subject look like they're a vampire because the saturation is set incredibly high. I did that on purpose to make it easier for you to see where you're painting. I strongly recommend that once you paint that perfect circle into the iris on the layer mask, then come into the actual controls of the hue and saturation adjustment layer and just simply reduce the saturation just a little bit. Subtlety is key inside of Photoshop. All of these layers should have their opacities and fills reduced just a little bit because when you're retouching eyes, this is one of the easiest areas to make this mistake where you leave things too powerful like the whites of the eyes and the audience, that's all they'll see. They'll be 
distracted by that, they won't look at anything else in the image. So subtlety is key inside of Photoshop. The last two here, opt, this is an optional one for color vibrance boost. Same thing as before with the extra light boost, paint onto the mask, then come into the control layer. And ultimately the vibrance has been boosted a lot, but you can also boost the saturation as well if needs be. The final layer is number four and it's the iris ring to darken it. And all you're gonna do is just find that black limball ring around the iris and use this curves adjustment layer to paint that in. Now, when you do, if you paint at 100% flow and opacity onto this layer mask, it's going to stand out when you paint the ring in around the eye dramatically. Don't be alarmed. Just reduce the opacity of this layer. Bring it down to like 20%. That's what I typically do. You get a nice, soft little black ring around the eye, which can make the iris stand out. It makes the eyes look pretty. So recapping, Action, Retouch 4.0 populates the folder group for frequency separation only for 16-bit images, not for 8-bit images. Then the folder group for dodging and burning with the two new ones of color burn and color highlights. And then of course the folder group with all the layers to retouch the eyes with a couple of different options and things that have changed in there. So you can get this action by going to the description below. It will take you to the Google Drive where you can download it. I do recommend that you replace the old action, the Retouch 3.0 action if you happen to have it. If you have other actions that populate all this or other third-party programs that are out there and so forth that do this for you that's rad give mine a go just to see how it's different and there's variances and things because everybody does things just a little bit differently when it comes to retouching itself so let's finish up with some final thoughts that are very quick which is download the action play around and experiment with it go to the retouching series if you don't know how to do all these things that i just talked about there's those in-depth guides there continue your education stay safe be a good human being and if you like the content you found in this video make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel because new content debuts each week in photography and photoshop education and when you subscribe make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified of that new content when you return to the youtubes and until next time i'll see you out there in the world of photoshop